What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This is the WWDC 2019 preview and everything that we know right now and expect to see before Apple's biggest event for the next generation of software and possibly a peek at some hardware too. So let's get to the new stuff first. 9 to 5 Max, Guillaume Rambo has leaked the first screenshots of dark mode for iOS 13 that can be enabled in the settings or in the control center. In these three examples, the first one shows the home screen whose only significant change is the darker background of the dock instead of a light one, and there could be possibly be new wallpapers that take better advantage of dark mode to really make it pop. Now this next one shows the music app in dark mode with Apple potentially using a true black background that could possibly save power, and its music playback controls are also darker in tone. And I know, you know, dark mode is cool, but it honestly gets way too much hype for what it really is. I know there will be people that use it and love it, but with the day-to-day -day use, it's not as uh, life-changing as you think. And most of you will go back to the standard mode. I know it's an option, which is cool. I just think it's all right. And the last screenshot from Rambo shows a new updated iOS interface after taking a screenshot that shows a blurred version of the user's wallpaper with more lifelike looking annotation tools. There's also a peek at this same interface, but for iOS 13 on the iPad with this tray that can be dragged around the screen according to 9to5Mac. Now we've heard about a redesigned reminders app and here's the first look at it from 9to5Mac with a sidebar and separate boxes for today scheduled flagged and all and let's also be real this is just outright ripping off and taking major design cues from the third party app memento and you know what that's a bad apple oh! but most users won't even care because apple's always the first to do anything didn't you know now we've talked on the show how apple is planning to merge the find my friends and find my iphone apps together and potentially making their own physical tile-like location tags the ecosystem is real and people will end up buying them because apple did it first yeah the new app is currently called find my rambo released the icon of the app right here but is that really gonna be the final name find my like hey did you check out the find my yeah that doesn't sound right now, iOS 13 is going to be a huge focus at WWDC 2019, but a move that has been expected for a while since the iPhone XR and makes me sad is Apple's plans to completely remove 3D touch from all 2019 iPhones and use haptic touch instead, which is a long press found on the iPhone XR. They are killing one of their most underrated features that Apple is just honestly too lazy to get behind and push it across all their devices. I loved 3D Touch from the start, and I expected so much more from it, but if there's one thing that we expect at WWDC, it's the death of 3D Touch, and that's a sad apple. <laughs> All right, we went through a bunch of these details in previous videos, but we're going to get the rest of you up to speed to catch up with everything we are still expecting at WWDC, so buckle up because it's a lot. Alongside what we just mentioned, there was an in-depth report from Mark Gurman at Bloomberg earlier in the month that revealed iOS 13 will bring even more improved speed and bug fixes. There will be new UI animations when launching multitasking and for closing apps. The widgets on the left side of the home screen will also be getting cleaned up with a new look. Apple's testing a new keyboard that allows you to swipe across letters on the keyboard in one motion to type out words. If you remember the swipe keyboard or the current Swift key keyboard app that's out there, that's what could be coming to iOS 13, but it's another first for Apple. A revamped health app will have a clearer looking outline of your daily activity and a section for hearing health that measures how loud you're listening to music on your headphones or the loudness of your environment. I like this feature a lot and it could provide us some new insights. A new screen time feature lets parents limit who their kids can and cannot connect to at certain times. There will be a new books app with a progress tracker and reward system. I still never use the books app and a new system wide sleep mode that will be related to an updated version of the bedtime feature that's a tab in Apple's clock app. It could also set up better integration for sleep tracking together with the Apple Watch. The HomePod, yes, the HomePod will soon be able to respond to different voices and get the much requested multi-user mode it needs. It's a start, but it still needs a whole lot more like multiple queries at once, more smart device support, and the ability to expand using it with third-party apps. 
And for people with disabilities, Apple's going to better integrate hearing aid support and have an even more comprehensive accessibility settings menu in the settings. All right, we know Apple's already working on iOS 14, not to get ahead too far. That's for a 2020 release that's expected to support 5G speeds and new AR features for next year's phones when the iPhone is really going to take its next big jump, but will arguably be two years behind with some of its major tech. Plus the long-standing rumors that it might finally include an in-display touch ID, potentially ditching the notch or notch iOS 13 for the iPad will also be getting an updated interface for multitasking and tweaks to the home screen. It's being tested for a new downloads manager for its Safari browser to access those downloads in a single place like they can on a computer and an updated files app that will work with third party apps for importing images and assets into apps like Photoshop. You'll also be able to use your iPad as a second Mac screen and have the ability to draw with an Apple Pencil, expanding your total viewing area. There's third-party solutions out there already, but it's no surprise that Apple would do this again. Now, it's an odd number year for iOS 13, and that's where we've seen the biggest new tweaks for the iPad. So I'm hoping that we see a lot more than what's being reported. So for example, my top three requests, uh, one, the ability to read files on external drives, I know it's wishful thinking. Also, finally bringing Apple Pro apps like Final Cut or Logic to their own Pro hardware. What a novel idea. I've been asking for that since day one, and it's been like year three now. That's something we shouldn't even have to wish for. And even seeing the official release of Photoshop for the iPad Pro would make me happy. And then this is for all of you watching right now. How about a freaking Apple calculator app for the iPad natively. I know it's ridiculously hard to do this Apple, but we believe in you. You can do it. Jumping over to Macs, we just saw Apple release the newest 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros that are the fastest MacBook Pros ever with up to eight core ninth gen Intel processors. The body and design is still exactly the same with the same exact butterfly keyboard. This time with new materials that they say will make the keyboard more reliable but it's still the same butterfly keyboard design. On top of that, this new 2019 model has already been added to the list of machines that qualify for Apple's keyboard service program. That includes machines as far back as 2015. So translation, yes, it's a speed bump that didn't actually fix the keyboard issue. Now that could open the door for the rumored 16 inch MacBook Pro to make an appearance as a featured product. I mean, sure, maybe, but I'm guessing it's more likely that we see it later this year instead of at WWDC. I know I could be wrong. Apple just announced the 13 and 15s, but I'm hoping we see it. I just don't think we'll see it just yet because it's too soon. Now, the biggest change we'll see in 2019 is the ability for iPad apps to run on Apple laptops and desktops. Developers writing iPad apps will also rework them to run on the Mac properly. Two of those Apple apps that will be coming over to the Mac this year is the podcast app and the newly merged Find My app. Now, there will also be a new Apple Music app that will be a standard Mac program showing the official breakup of iTunes. I know many of you are thankful for that. I am. Other iOS features expected to come to the Mac platform include screen time controls for family members, effects and stickers for the desktop messages app, Siri Shortcuts app to build and customize your own Siri commands, and then the new Reminders app and an upgrade to Apple Books. Now, Apple is really making this push to beef up the Mac App Store with new content with their new developer toolkit under the internal code name Marzipan. We know the Big A wants iPhone apps to run on the Mac by next year with the goal being a single download from the App Store that can run on any iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Now, the Apple hardware that we're still hoping to see at WWDC 2019, come on, this is easy, a sneak peek at the modular Mac Pro that Cupertino has continuously teased that it's coming over the past year and a half or so. Just make sure, Apple, that if you show it, it is ready to ship this year. Otherwise, do not do it. Like, don't do that. People go crazy, including me. Now, Apple is also selling a new 23.7-inch LG 4K display online and at its stores but it's also working on this rumored new 31.6 inch 6K mini LED display with HDR support that could make an appearance alongside the new Mac Pros. I think it would make, make sense to see both of them at WWDC and I just wanna see both of them 
together. And finally, Watch OS 6, probably the most exciting piece of Apple hardware alongside of the iPad Pro right now. Come on, I mean, this thing's doing the big things for Apple. Bloomberg reports Apple will be adding the App Store directly onto the Apple Watch so users can go download apps on the go. The Voice Memos app is coming to the watch even if I already found a third-party option. Shout out to Just Press Record. Also, Animoji and Memoji stickers from the iPhone are coming too. The Apple Watch will get an Apple Book app for listening to audiobooks and a calculator app if you don't already own a third-party one. Two health-related apps include Dose for pill reminders and cycles to track menstrual cycles, plus more complications for more bits of info like audiobook status, the battery life of hearing aids, and other complications that measure external noise or even rain data. Now, there will be several cool new watch faces, but it's still unlikely that we'll get third-party watch faces or even just a few from third-party partners unless it's another Disney one. Like, come on, we got Mickey and Minnie and Toy Story. So give me some Marvel ones already, right? Let's do it. All right, all these features are setting up the Apple Watch for an even more independent future for the iPhone. One of my top requests is to get the Apple Watch at a point where we can set it up without using our iPhone at all. And that opens it up to so many more people outside of Apple's current ecosystem. So, sheesh. That's everything from the Bloomberg report. And see, I told you to hold on to your butts. It, it was going to be a lot. But I'd love to hear what do you want to see the most at WWDC 2019? You know, just all you have to do, leave it in the comments because I read them all. Or you can write something nice like Timuntu Beta says, Lipstick? Really, dude? Um, Timuntu Beta, I don't wear lipstick, but thanks for focusing on my lips. Now, one thing we do know we won't see at WWDC, a new iPod Touch. That's because uh, Apple just released an update almost two years later with an updated A10 processor for the iPod Touch, a 256 gig storage option, and the same design from 2012. Because they had parts laying around and figured, why not? At least we can make these compatible with AR Kit, whether people buy them or not. They start at 199. I still don't think the iPod Touch is gonna sell a significant amount, but this is another classic Tim Cook move. Use the old stuff, put it on the market to move some units instead of none. That really brings an excitement level from a scale of one to 10 for me. I say let's call it a 10, as in a negative 10, yeah. That's a bad Apple. <coughs> and hey, Apple Arcade and Apple TV Plus, we're still waiting for an official release date and price because right now, if you're Apple TV Plus, uh, Disney Plus is just taking your lunch. They've already got my money committed with all the content they're bringing. They've laid it all out for 70 bucks a year. Apple TV Plus, you're, skip you're still giving us nothing. Like, nothing to truly get excited about. Nada. Nothing. All right. That's pretty much everything we know and expect to see at WWDC 2019. Was that a lot to take in? Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. Now, the keynote will happen on Monday, June the 3rd at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. But, you know, I'll be having BTZ's live pre-show, the keynote, and the post-show, taking your live calls starting at 8.45 a.m.-ish Pacific time, 11.45-ish a.m. Eastern time, plus my big bingo card and giveaways that you can watch right here on my YouTube channel. And if you want to go deeper with Apple, check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we dive into the stories that matter. Check it out and subscribe. And also, all my stuff is independent. And you can support me at patreon.com slash Tong. So thanks so much for watching. Take care, be safe, and we will talk to you soon. WWDC 2019 is the coming. Peace.